Hello everyone, thank you for coming. I was half expecting nobody to show up for my part, but I know everybody here is probably here for the other people, but I'm going to do my best. Okay. So as you guys heard, my name is Ian, I'm the editor of Rage. And um, a long time ago, my editor told me when I was still a reporter that journalists make the most horrible public speakers because, you know, we write. Uh, secondly, uh, we also are horrible speakers because we are too used to asking questions. You know, we are, our whole lives, our whole careers, centers around asking questions. So when people ask us to give, us, to give talks, they end away with more questions and answers and they're like, why the hell did we pay him for? So the good thing this time is I think I'm getting a goodie back, so the expectations are rather lower. So, here goes whatever. A uh, quick uh, further introduction to myself. Uh, I, I, I was a journalist. I started out seven years ago with the Star. Woo, the Star, anyone? Yeah. It's very half-hearted, but thank you, nonetheless. <laughs> Most of them came from my fellow speakers because I think we're all going through the same. Like, where's the numbers part? Okay. So I'm gonna play a game which I usually use to introduce myself, which is guess the celebrity. Because part of my job involves me interviewing a lot of very interesting people. Some of them famous, some of them not so famous. Some of them aren't even really interesting at all. But, for example, let's just guess, okay? See what you can recognize. Can you tell who is the guy with the creepy smile? Tony Hawk. Okay, you must be like an 80s baby, right? Whoever it was, Tony Hawk. So he was in town for the Lower Sports Award. We got to interview him, great guy. Uh, not just a skateboarder, but also an advocate for young people all over the world. Um, he advocates people pursuing their dreams and everything. Nice interview, great guy. Football fans? Any Manchester United fans in the house? Can't believe this, no matter. We had two bad seasons and you're all gone, all the fans. Terrible. <laughs> two bad seasons. Anybody? YouTube generation? You guys will know them. Pentatonics! Oh my god! Wow. Therein lies the generation gap. <laughs> Emily Vanessa, silence. Pentatonics, yes. But I love them, they're fantastic. Anyone? Okay, I, I picked him because, I put him in the slide because he's the current world champion, so... Okay, ignore the other two people. The one in the beanie. Anybody? Is there any comments? And a guy answered that. That's amazing! I actually have a good story from the time I went to London for this, for this concert. So usually when you're working, we, um, when we go overseas for assignments, uh, we have to apply for a journalist visa. But sometimes, you know, they're too lazy to do it, or so they say, why don't you just go home and see what happens? So when I got to the uh, immigration counter, sorry, uh, cust immigration, cust immigration, right. So I got to the immigration counter, the lady asked me, so why are you here in London? The only answer I had was, I'm here to watch the Selena Gomez concert. <laughs> and I swear, I swear she broke out laughing. In, you know, in London, Heathrow Airport, where everybody is so stressed, this lady just laughs in my face. And I said, no judging, please don't watch this like, it's okay, it's okay. <laughs> Anybody? Okay, so this is, this is post uh, 300, Gerard Butler, not the post ridiculous rom-coms throughout Butler, so I was still quite excited when I went in. Anyone? Okay, just for the record, I am actually taller than him. He's wearing football boots so that the studs had like a couple of inches. Oh, this one totally gets. Anybody? Any guesses? Anybody who would wear a leather glove? Sorry? There you go. There you go. Okay. So, the minute I, when I set up my career, I always said I want to get the big three in pop music. So, I, I actually managed to, to get them. The second one of the big three is, obviously, I had to, you know, I had to, I had to. But the one that I wanted the most, the most prized interview in my career, that, you know, I will carry to, with me to my grave, I will put it on my tombstone. Okay. Whatever, it's just just a view, who cares? Okay. So the thing is, this is the part of my job that a lot of people hear about. They see it every once in a while, you know, you get to do something fun, you get to interview someone very interesting, very famous. 
and that's what fills my Facebook time. And that's what gets the most engagements on my Facebook timeline. People like it, people say, oh my god, you're so lucky. Which I get very annoyed because you don't go to like a entrepreneur and say, oh my god, you're so lucky, you earn your first million, million bucks, you know? I work hard for this, but whatever. So but what we really do is on a regular, this is what people see. The things that we actually do, we like to work on very serious stories. As journalists, there's nothing that pleases us more to do stuff like this. Uh, anybody can guess what this story is about? Yellow umbrellas? Hong Kong! There you go. It's about the umbrella revolution. So, Prince Wong, who is kind of like one of the left-hand men of Joshua Wong, uh, the, the person who's leading the umbrella revolution in Hong Kong, came to Malaysia and we managed to get an interview with her. Uh, so these are the stories that we really, truly relish doing. Uh, even though interviewing Justin Bieber is fun, uh, it makes for good Facebook profile photos, but this is our bread and butter. This is what we tr that truly gets us going every day. And these stories are actually much, much harder to write. Uh, for example, a story with Justin Bieber, if you just reproduce his answers line by line, people read the story. But if it was Prince Wong, a, a really remarkable young woman, she has achieved so much at such a young age. She's standing up for her country's right to fair elections. Um, people wouldn't read it. I can guarantee you, if we had published a Q&A with her, just the way it was, nobody would read it. And that is the sad part about what we do. Uh, this is another story that we did recently, a few months ago. Something that we're also quite proud of. Uh, we did a uh, quick search, we did, we did some research. It turns out a lot of young people are actually struggling to find houses to rent. Because in Malaysia, homeowners discriminate too much based on the color of your skin. Or your religion. And uh, hopefully none of you guys will have to fix that in the future. But uh, this takes a lot of work. To do this, we went undercover, we spoke to a lot of real estate agents, we did a lot of research, and came to the conclusion that it is true. A lot of Malaysians are still, in, in this particular sense, they still can't get past the color of people's skin. If you're dark skinned, unfortunately, chances of you being able to get a house in Malaysia are very low. So this is something that we try to advocate for as much as we can. So now that you know what it is that we do, it's getting to this, the topic at hand, truth and dare, which I, which I really love. It's really, really close to my heart. Okay. So for me, the dare part is the part that is easy for most Malaysians. As you can tell on social media, everybody is very bold. Everybody has an opinion. That's the easy part. Right? You, you, everybody, so probably somebody's posting something about me right now. It's like, this guy is so boring and whatever. You know, everybody dares to do that now. There is no filter, there is no need to hold back. So that's fine, you got that cover. The part that I've always found hard as a journalist is finding the truth. And it's particularly difficult because like my editor used to say, everybody's truth is different. What is truth to me is not truth to you. What is truth to somebody, for example, who supports same-sex marriage is not the same truth to somebody else. To that person, that is truth. That is his life, his or her life. But to other people, you disagree for whatever reasons. You know, that is your truth. So that's the tough part. So where we as journalists come in is that we have to take everybody's different truths, take into account everything, present something that's very fair, present the facts in a fair and balanced manner, so you can decide for yourself which truth you want to subscribe to, and you can make an educated decision. For example, the story that I showed you earlier about racism in the Malaysian rental market. Do you all feel that, that it is wrong for people to choose their tenant to rent their houses to people only of a certain race? Can I have a quick show of hands? Do you think it's wrong? Yes. Yes? Thank you very much. I'm glad to hear that. I'm glad to hear that I'm in such company. But the problem is, when we posted that story to Facebook and online, the majority of people said it's perfectly fine. There is a perfectly sound reason why people do it. Very pragmatic reasons. They said, this is... Some, some people 
have a bad track record. Some people of certain cultures, of different cultures from different nationalities, different countries, they are known to be difficult tenants. They are known to be people who might be very demanding and they, might, they have been known to use the house in certain ways that might damage the house, whether that be true or not. But they have that perception. That's what they say, I've spent millions of ringgit on this house. Why should I let it go to waste? Why should I risk my investment? And for us, as journalists, we have to present their truth as well. And that is the mark of true courage. Real courage, real daring for a journalist is being able to open yourself up to somebody else's truth. We had to open ourselves up to the possibility that these people were right. In my mind, personally, I think it's just racist. I think there's no basis whatsoever you're stereotyping. But I had to open myself up to it. I have to find and interview people who are just like that, the kind of people that I personally don't like, and to give them time a day, and publish them in a newspaper that will be read by over a million people a day. So that, I'm not trying to praise myself, but that kind of is real courage, real daring. It's easy for you to post something on Facebook, but to be able to find the truth and say someone else's truth, even if you don't agree with it, that is real courage. Another problem we have now is that we live in an age of half-truths. Uh, because of social media, do you guys realize that in social media, uh, what you read, for example, on Facebook, is actually determined by an algorithm, right? It's not the first story that comes, that is published by a friend, will come on the top of your timeline. Actually, Facebook is feeding you posts based on your likes, your dislikes, your demographic, and also based on which person paid the most to have their post right on top. You guys know that, right? You guys are the social media generation. Uh, so in that sense, you are only constantly being fed information. You're only fed truths that relate to yourself. You're only learning things about the world that fit your own worldview. And that is dangerous. So in the past, uh, we have trained editors, for example, people like the senior editors that I worked with in the start. They've worked decades honing their skills to determine what, what kind of news that the people need to hear. Facebook and a lot of other social media, they feed you what you want to hear. A lot of online portals, they'll feed you what you want to hear because that sells, that creates traffic to the site and it helps sell more ads. But the role of the traditional media, the role of an editor, has to be to say, you have to have the courage to say, I'm going to forego the traffic. I don't need your likes. I don't need your shares. I want to tell you what you need to know. And these could be important issues. This could be public policy. This could be educational issues. But instead, what we have a lot on Facebook is like elite daily kind of stories, like 10 reasons why it rocks to be an introvert, five reasons why you should, you should date a girl that drinks whiskey, or you know, things like that. It doesn't make sense, you know, it doesn't, but you don't need to hear it. But once in a while you want to hear it. Unfortunately, thing with social media now is, with all these algorithms in place, you are only being fed what you want to hear. And so that creates an age where you only hear half the truth. It's not that it's a lie, but you're only hearing half of it. And it gets even more dangerous because you start to realize that everybody can become a broadcaster as well. Everybody can become a publisher. So let's say I only know half of this story. Uh, my favorite example is the one, a few years ago, there was a 13-year-old boy who was accused of molesting a girl, a, an adult woman, at a petrol station. I'm not sure if you guys remember that case. Within an hour, the, uh, the victim had posted up his IC number, his family's address, his, the photo of the 13-year-old child on Facebook and it became news. Have you guys heard of that? So again, that's only one side of the story. Nobody bothered to get the boy's side of the story, the 13 year old side of the story. Immediately, we actually used it as a case story after that, a uh, case study after that, because people were starting to get, to get really up in arms and they were saying, we should show up at this boy's house and we should protest outside his, van, outside his house because the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. And that was an actual quote we pulled from Facebook. There are people who are actually trying to gather people together to go protest at the, at, the, at the boy's house. Even before he had been charged. Even before the case had been made official. Okay. So we're only hearing half of the truth so often. 
that's the problem. The thing is, journalists and editors fall into that trap sometimes as well. Of course, nobody's perfect. Uh, and of, <laughs> of course, there are some journalists and editors who are just plain incompetent. Hopefully that's not me. Who knows? But, it's not that they won't make that same mistake and start publishing half-truths and they fail and in their roles as gatekeepers for media. But, at least for these people, you know that their careers are on the line. Their livelihood is on the line. So there is still that level of credibility there, to a certain extent. So as journalists, how do we achieve this? How do we learn to tell the truth and be able to tell all of it? To be able to educate people and give them all the facts they need to decide on what truths they wanted to subscribe to. First thing is, we have to be very objective. And this is something that applies to readers as well, right? When you read something, the number one tip we always tell our reporters is, if you find yourself getting too emotional about a topic, stop. Reevaluate what you're doing. Everything that you're writing, if you have become too emotional. Some cases for me, like, I would say, Again, coming back to that same example, the racist homo uh, rental thing, racist renter, racist realtors, or something, whatever we call that story. Personally, I thought it was ridiculous. I was angry. I didn't think it was fair. But I have to remove myself from the story and tell myself, be objective. Have you told the truth from both sides of the, of the story? Secondly, is that we have to be fair. Perfect, segue perfectly. Be fair, tell both sides of the stories. So it's okay to be objective, but sometimes if your objective only tells the truth on one side, it's not enough. You have to tell both sides of the story. This is something that we do all the time. Third one, be accurate. This is very boring. This is not fun, but it's very important. You need to always check whether the sources of news that you see online are accurate. You have to double check before you share, before you create a panic. Um, and this is something Really like it. Yeah, there's so many case studies, it doesn't happen. And the last one is, you have to be socially responsible. Uh, one thing that we always do is, well, whenever a new reporter comes into the company, we tell them that you have a responsibility to, to write, to create content, to create stories that actually have an impact on society, that actually has some kind of good cause. Uh, but it is a double-edged sword, it is a bit dangerous, because, again, both sides, the truths on both sides of the fence, the, the ISIS terrorist who's throwing gay people off the building, you know, he thinks he's doing something socially responsible. In his mind, that's socially responsible. So, tell me, as a journalist, how am I supposed to report that? How am I supposed to balance these kind of stories and be fair and be objective? So these are the questions that we constantly have to deal with. We have to find the truth. We have to be able to deliver the objective truth from both sides of, of the fence before we can dare to do anything. And uh, last bit, what can you do to help that process? One thing that we don't have in Malaysia is good news literacy training, good media training. In other countries, uh, here in Scandinavia, they have very good programs where work right from primary school, they teach you this is what how the media works. This is the difference between an opinion piece, between a news piece, between a feature story, so you know that this is an opinion, it's not a statement of fact. And then the children get to grow up in that environment and they know how to be objective. They know how to be fair. They know how to be socially responsible through the media. So hopefully, I think uh, this school has a really good media program, right, I think? Anybody here in the editorial board or something? No. No, see. That therein lies the problem, probably. You probably should look into that, because it is very I hope at least what I've said will be able to convince you that it is important. News literacy, understanding how the media works, and thinking like a journalist could make a huge difference as we seek the truth and dare. That's it for me. Thank you very much.